Hi Life Group leaders, uh, Paul and Karen here. We are uh, videotaping from a different spot today. We're not in the church, in case you hadn't noticed. We are in the car on our way home from Rapid City. We had to uh, go to get Paul's back check today. The good news is he is making improvement. The bad news is it may take quite a while till he's all better. So. Um, yes, that's what she said. <laughs> Good news is he's feeling a lot better and making progress. So um, we're headed home now, but we wanted to talk with you a little bit about Chapter 6 in Good to Great. We, um, we were just talking and how we noticed that this chapter, which is about taking great risks, really um, seems to build off of the last couple of chapters. Um, we, you know, we had the chapter on dreaming great dreams, and then we had this chapter on praying great prayers, and now we're talking about taking great risks. And he just said over and over throughout this chapter that um, faith requires risk. Without risk, there's no faith, he said. Right. It's just, wow. Yeah. Over and over again, you're there's right, he said that. Yeah. So, um, it's... It's a challenging chapter, um, but we really, really enjoyed it. We um, both picked up on, you know, all the stories through through the middle of this chapter of the Bible heroes and some of the minor supporting characters in the Bible and how so many of them had to take risks, just huge risks. And that's what faith requires of us, that we can't just do things all the time that we can do on our own. If it doesn't require God to come through in some way, then the, the faith factor isn't a part of it. And um, so Paul has a couple of stories. He's not going to look at you. I told him he can't. He has to keep his eyes on the road. That's going to be hard for him. But I'll sit here and make faces or something to keep you entertained. He's going to tell us a couple of stories about... Um, just some things in his past um, before I even knew him about some risks that he took um, that required great faith. Yeah, well, some of you might know that uh, before I became a pastor, I was a civil engineer uh, and I had a great job. I worked for about six or seven years as a civil engineer and I had great possibilities of moving forward with my the job that I had uh, moving up in the company and uh, yeah I, I, I was set and but yet I was working as a volunteer in my other hours at, at the church as a volunteer youth pastor and God was just continuing to grow me and change me until all of a sudden he called me beyond the uh, the volunteering to take the step of faith this risk and it was so cool when I went in to uh, sit with my the president and the vice president of the engineering company where I worked and uh, said I needed to tell them something. Uh, the president of the company just looked at me and said, which seminary are you going to? And so they they could see it as well, the, the call that God was placing in my heart. But it was a risk, you know, because there's no doubt I took a major pay cut and potential for increase in the company. It was just big. But yet I just knew and I kept talking to other people. I knew it was the right call that God was placing on my life. And uh, it was, my parents struggled a little bit right at first. I remember my mom's face when I told her that, that I was stepping away after they had helped me. I was gonna say they paid for college. They paid so. for college and uh, <laughs> got me through there. And, uh, and But yet at the same time, they weren't surprised because they, uh, they had known that I was following Christ in a big ways. And, uh, so they weren't overly surprised. They were just wanting to make sure, cautious, I guess is the better word. Uh, for their son. But as we think of this chapter, when you consider what our society, sorry, this is bouncing a lot right here, um, what our society considers important, and that's progress and upward mobility and, you know, making a lot of money and being able to buy the dream house, all of those things, you know, to probably a lot of people, what you were doing and stepping away from being an engineer seemed ridiculous. I had ridiculous. some family members that uh, that maybe they didn't know Jesus as much as some of the others did, and they struggled big time with it. Uh, but yet, they supported me though, and that was good. 
you know, part of that also, Carrot, right around that time, when I was an engineer, because I was a young buck and I didn't spend my money as wisely as I should, I, I the thought of tithing was just crazy to me. There was no way I, there was no way I could give 10% of my money. I needed my money to live my lifestyle. And, uh, but yet, as I was growing in Christ, that was another thing where I was convicted, where God called me. And I realized that if I'm gonna be preaching someday about tithing, I needed to trust God with it. And so after I gave up that big job with the big paycheck, I just decided right there, I went cold turkey. I started tithing and I have been tithing ever since. And, and now of course, Karen, we, we go above the tithe because we just have faith. We take great risks with that. And uh, God comes through all the time. But it was so funny for me that it took me giving up the big paycheck to be able to trust God with my money. And, uh, but what a great blessing God has taken care of me ever since. Yep, yeah. I think that's a huge one for a lot of people. It is, it is. You know, that is a tremendous risk when you feel like um, I can hardly make it on 100% to turn over 10% to my church and live on 90 seems crazy like a ridiculous um, thought let alone you know something that you would do in faithfulness so um, yeah those are good stories Paul I wanted to read a little bit out of the chapter just yeah, that one. a couple oh. sentences that really um, I thought were really powerful they're on the bottom of page 158 and it says just remember that where there's no risk, there's no faith. Where there's no faith, there's no power or joy or intimacy with God. There are also no supernatural miracles, no reward, and ultimately no pleasing God. I, that's powerful. <laughs> I, yeah. I, for all of you, after we're done here, just read that again. That's, yeah. that's a powerful yeah. quote. Bottom of 158. Yeah, without risk, there's no miracles, no reward, and ultimately no pleasing God. Because we're doing it on our own strength yeah. and not trusting God and His strength and His power. Yeah, yeah. I know, um, you know, as we're, we've got this team getting ready to go to Haiti here in a month. Honduras. Honduras, not there Haiti. Honduras here in a month. Um, for a lot of us, that feels like a risk. <laughs> a lot of risk, because there are so many unknowns in this. And, um, you know, we're, we just talked yesterday and just talking a lot about trusting God in this and waiting for the miracles to come, you know, and in taking this risk and saying, hey, God, we're doing these things. You know, we still need money. We're, we're waiting on you. That's a risk. We, you know, we're going to go and do these things that we don't even know what we're doing. And it's in a language we don't understand. And it's going to be with cool. People we've never met. And that feels like a great risk and so just um looking forward to seeing what god will do yes, in the midst of yes yes supernatural of miracles and um all of that but this is talking about we're, we're really excited to see what's going to happen karen what about within our life groups you know yep. as we talk about this we're you know we're talking to life group leaders when we talk about risk what are some of the ways that you see life group leaders taking risks mm -hmm. um you know i think for all of us in life, there's this natural tendency to do what's safe, right? And, and comfortable. And what's comfortable and what's routine and what we know. And so as we go into a new life group season, I think little risks would be to do things differently at our meetings, right? That would be a little risk that we could do. Maybe in the past, you, the life group leader, have always been the one to end in prayer and maybe it's time to push your group wow, <laughs> to, that's exciting. to take the risk to have different people lead in prayer. Maybe it's a different form of worship or, you know, maybe the risk is just pushing people to go a little deeper in their answers to some of the questions. Um, that That's risky for it some is. people to share things that they haven't shared before. So um, there's definitely risk in that. You know, I've been thinking a lot with that chapter on dream great dreams my mind is still spinning on what could our life group pull off as far as our Love Gillette project this year. And I am dreaming a big dream and it's gonna involve great risk, I think. Um, so you better start praying some great, great prayers. Right, so I better start praying some <laughs> great prayers. Maybe y'all could pray for me or for my group. Look at this, um, pray for me. <laughs> 
but I'm, um, you know, that, oh, the end of that, right there, when he said the, at the bottom of that page, the very last thing there, there are, you know, without faith, there's no power or joy or intimacy with God. There are no miracles, no reward, and ultimately no pleasing God. And so to me, I'm thinking, man, I want to know what God wants to do, what he, how he wants to use our group, and I want to be a part of it. That to me sounds so exciting. And I don't want us to be yeah. a ho-hum group that sits on the sidelines and watches some other group get to be a part of the miracle. I want to be a part of that. So, <laughs> um, I, you know, I want to see what God can do if we make ourselves available. So to me, that's another um, great risk we can take is to just do something like that we can't pull off on our own. And maybe we need to call in and get another group to join us in it. Who right. knows what that will look right. like. Right, right. But the other thing, you know, we were just um, talking last night. We had a life group campfire and we pulled our group together and um, I think the the easy thing to do, comfortable. the comfortable thing to do is a lot of our life groups have been full for a long time and have looked the same for several seasons. And so the easy thing to do right now is to leave your group closed because we've already established relationships. Um, the great risk, and this is what we discussed last night with our group, is to open your group or to invite someone new into your group. And last night, our life group talked about this, and we were all on the same page that we're going to bring others into our group. This is going to make our group big. Our group is already big because we have our teenagers in there, but we're going to find ways to kind of work around that and split, split into it. smaller yeah. groups to do some of our discussion. Um, and eventually, our goal would be that our group will spawn off into two or three intentional family life groups. That would be our goal is that, you know, the great risk is we want this group to be bigger. We want more families to have this opportunity. And so, um, but we don't bring, really want to do that because we love our group as it yeah, is. We love it's our group hard. and we all love each other in that group. And bringing new people into your group is a humongous risk because if you've already got camaraderie, if you've already built relationships, trust, trust you don't know what bringing someone else into your group is going to do and yet if we don't risk <laughs> god can't move god can't move well he can well but he can move even bigger we need faith yeah we need to have faith and faith requires risk and that's yeah. what this chapter was about was that we need to do something that requires risk and so life group leaders we encourage you you know maybe there's some small risks you can take like i've already talked about with things you do within your group but maybe there's something huge, like opening your group or inviting someone in or taking on a big Love Gillette project that you just don't think is possible for your group to do on your own. Um, we encourage you to start praying some great prayers and dreaming big dreams about these things. What could your group do? What could you do? I, like I said, I don't want to sit on the sidelines and watch another group do something amazing and have God show up big time and miss out on it. I want our group to be a part of that. So, um, real quick, Paul, before we wrap up here. Yeah. <laughs> New Life is also, as a church, getting ready to enter a season of great risk. Can you tell the life group leaders a little bit about what we're talking about? Yeah, and, and I, I don't know the, all the parts of it yet, but uh, there's no doubt that many of you have heard that our church is just growing. I mean, if you have kids, you've seen that just the number of kids we have on Sunday mornings. Even during the summer, we're, our numbers are up. And so we're struggling with, we have to take a risk and we're trying to figure out what the new building, whatever that looks like is gonna look like. When I say new building, we're gonna, we're gonna change our present building and build onto it a little bit and change some rooms around. Uh, and that's a risk because change is hard as we all know. And we're all gonna have to sacrifice a little bit in that. But uh, we're you know, talking with some architects and some uh, builders and trying to figure out how we can best make our facility into a better situation so that we can reach more people, bring more kids in and share the gospel with more people. And uh, so our auditorium's in great shape. It's big enough for the number of people that are coming in for even for more and more people to come, yeah. but it doesn't match with the size of our children's area and our lobby, lobby area, truthfully, with uh, our hospitality. So we're trying to figure it out. 
with that, for all of you life group leaders, join us in this conversation of risk that uh, we just, you know, we're gonna keep letting you in on it of what, as we get more information because you're pastors of your life groups. And so we're gonna be connecting with you and sharing more information of as it comes in of what those next steps are and what this is all gonna look like. But uh, it's gonna be a big risk, but wow, as we trust in God in this, what great things God can do in bringing more people of Gillette in to hear the gospel through what he's doing at New Life. Yeah, yeah. As our church takes this risk, it's, it's going to be incredible to watch how God responds. Pray for Pastor Mike because, you know, yep. he's the boss and uh, he's yeah, he's our leader. He's concerned a little bit because, you know, this is a big step and, uh, and he's going to require all of you to step on board with the leadership. Right. And so just pray for Pastor Mike as he leads us along with the board and uh, the other leaders in this journey. Yeah, absolutely. Our church is about to enter a period of risk and that's going to require faith, but it's also when we're gonna see the hand of God move. So it's a very, very exciting time um, for all of us and you to be leaders in this body. You know, you we're all leaders and so we're all gonna be involved in this together. So. All right, Life Group leaders, we hope you enjoyed chapter six as much as we did. We will talk to you again next Monday for chapter seven.